2018 Mercedes-Benz Gle-Class Coupe Review. The Mercedes-Benz GLE Coupe Fastback Crossover certainly is stylish, but it is not very practical. The 2018 Mercedes-Benz Gle-Class Coupe will not be for the inexperienced or practical of mind. While many people buy crossovers for superior passenger and cargo space in comparison with sedans or wagons, the 2018 Mercedes-Benz Gle-Class Coupe instead prioritizes style over utility. Relative to the normal Gle-Class, the GLE Coupe's swoopy roofline reduces both rear seat headroom and vertical safekeeping in the back. So if the utility facet of this SUV is compromised, where exactly will it shine? Ostensibly, the Gla Class Coupe is much more interested in that sport bit. Most Mercedes-Benz vehicles give you a variety of engines that run the gamut from fuel efficient to tire shredding. The Gla Class Coupe skips the boring stuff and is available in just two versions, outlandish and ludicrous. The so-called base engine can be a twin-turbo V6 churning out nearly 400 horsepower, even though the AMG 63 S twin-turbo V8 cranks out nearly 600 horsepower. Though the GLE Coupe absolutely stomps inside a straight line, Mercedes engineers were not able to do much to boost this vehicle's handling prowess. Even in comparison with some similarly designed crossovers, the coupe is simply not much fun to push. The end result is often a vehicle that's not especially practical or sporty. What's new? The AMG GLE 43 is more powerful, increasing engine output from 362 horsepower to 385 horsepower. A new AMG Performance Studio package debuts for your GLE 43 adding black exterior elements and orange rimmed wheels, among other appearance upgrades. Otherwise, the Mercedes-Benz Gle-Class Coupe is unchanged for 2018. As almost as much as we like the concept of the AMG GLE 63 S as well as outrageously powerful twin turbo V8, it's spectacularly more costly than its baby brother. For that reason, We'd start with the typical AMG GLE 43 and tick the boxes for both premium packages. These two packages convey a plethora of advanced driver aids and some neat luxury upgrades, best of all, they don't really increase the net profit by much. Add the massaging front seats with ventilation plus you've got a sporty SUV full of desirable features. Trim levels and features. The 2018 Mercedes-Benz Gle-Class Coupe is usually a five-passenger mid-size SUV accessible in two trim levels, AMG GLE 43 and AMG GLE 63 S. Both can tow as much as £7,200 and are also equipped with standard formatic all-wheel drive. Despite their similar names, a large gulf in price and gratification separates both the variants. The AMG GLE 43 is well equipped as standard, as well as on the whole it might be described as a good alternative to everyday luxury people movers. Fears little or no that's reasonable around the AMG GLE 63 S, however, as well as its fans embrace its ludicrousness being a badge of honor. Powering the AMG GLE 43 is often a turbocharged 3.0 litre V6 385 horsepower, 384 pound feet of torque, as well as a 9 speed automatic. Standard equipment highlights include 21 inch wheels, an adaptive air suspension, a panoramic sunroof, an electricity liftgate, power folding and auto dimming mirrors, dual zone automatic climate control an energy adjustable tire, heated front seats, driver seat memory settings, premium vinyl upholstery and also a 115 volt household style power outlet. Standard tech and precautionary features include an 8 inch central display, the command infotainment interface, a navigation system, a 13 speaker Harman Kardon head unit, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. 
blind spot monitoring, lane departure warning and intervention, as well as a forward collision warning system with automatic emergency braking. Two primary options packages are available for that GLE 43. The affordable premium 2 package has heated and cooled front cup holders, interior ambient lighting, illuminated door sills as well as a center pass-through for the rear seat. The premium 3 pack further adds a 360 degree parking camera, back and front parking sensors, adaptive cruise control, a mechanical steering system, a collision avoidance system, lane departure mitigation and a mechanical parallel parking system. It's a major step up price-wise towards the AMG GLE 63S. Under the hood is often a turbocharged 5.5 litre V8 577 horsepower, 561 lbft of torque mated into a 7-speed automatic transmission. It adds 22-inch wheels, summer performance tyres, active stabiliser bars, bigger brakes, adaptive LED headlights, automatic high beam control, a carbon fibre engine cover, a 360-degree parking camera, noise reducing front row windows, a sport tyre, heated and ventilated front sport seats, front passenger memory settings, upgraded leather upholstery and also the contents on the premium 2 package. It also includes the premium 3 package's 360 degree parking camera and parking system. There are several appearance packages also. Both models can be furnished with the night package, which adds gloss black lower valances and window surrounds. The GLE 43 only AMG Performance Studio package has the night package along with an orange lip for the front bumper an orange stripe within the wheels and fork seward seat inserts. Notable standalone options include Triz and Climate Control, reasonably limited 14-speaker Bang and Olufs and Subwoofer, Multicant Massaging Front Seats, Heated Rear Seats, a Rear Entertainment System along with a Trailer Hitch. Optional to the GLE 63S is often a Performance Exhaust System. Trim Tested each vehicle typically can be purchased in multiple versions that happen to be fundamentally similar. The S on this review use our full test from the 2016 Mercedes-Benz Gle-Class Coupe AMG GLE 63 S 5.5 liters twin turbo V8 7 speed automatic AWD. Note: Since this test was conducted, the present Gle-Class Coupe has brought only minor revisions. Our findings remain applicable on the 2018 Gle Class Coupe. Driving It's tremendously powerful and agile for the size, however you never forget exactly how heavy this GLE Coupe is. It's civilized when you are just cruising around. A puzzling vehicle, it's effective within the same way a gold-plated hammer is. Acceleration Kidding thrust on the 5.5 litre twin turbo V8. Big hearted and punchy. The 7 speed automatic is usually a bit dull witted and will not lead the category in its a reaction to gear change requests. It's smooth, though. It blitz to 60 miles per hour within 4.0 seconds within our testing. Braking. Despite its mass, it stops from 60 miles per hour within a respectable 112 feet. Pedal feel out partying is intuitive and straightforward to modulate. Steering. The steering within reason precise and well weighted, though feel is within the num side. No bad manners, though. The quick steering ratio tends to make this bruiser a little easier to wield. Handling. For its size, it's more adept than you could possibly expect. Heavy and stable. Body roll within reason contained, plus it changes direction without drama. But other sporting SUVs have better handling. Drivability. It's quite pleasant in normal driving. 
it behaves within a civilized manner in routine driving. Smooth gear changes. The idle stop feature responds acceptably quickly when restarting. This is really a vehicle you can let your grandparents drive. Comfort. It has well shaped seats and noise isolation than you may expect. The GLE Coupe rides greater than its primary competitor, the BMW X6M. The engine sounds terrific. Seat comfort. The front seats are supportive but sometimes still deliver good comfort during long drives. The optional massage function is entertaining. Reasonably comfortable back seat. Ride comfort. Better ride compliance as opposed to BMW X6M. The standard air suspension rounds over sharp edges from the road and does a good job of governing the car's large 22-inch wheels. Noise and vibration. Very effective noise isolation. The engine is vocal during even light acceleration, yet it's unobtrusive and also satisfying to see. Very good suppression of wind noise. Road noise just isn't as bad since the huge steamroller tires indicates. Interior. While finely trimmed, the GLE 63's cabin suffers due on the low and sloping roofline, which uses interior space. Fears surprisingly little space inside considering the gargantuan outside dimensions. All with the downsides of a giant vehicle with none in the upsides. Is beneficial. Like all modern Benzes, it really is a weller I doubt cabin that's intuitive to utilize. We like the fundamental climate control knobs plus the thick leader. The row of shiny buttons looks nice but lacks swatchability. Getting and jetting out. Fears a rather tall intensify into the cabin. Getting in is impeded from the running board, it's too narrow for being useful however gets within your way. The rear door opening is small because from the low roof line. Roominess. The sloping roof is perfect for style only, it uses back seat headroom and cargo space. The feeling of spaciousness in advance is better than inside rear. Front passengers enjoy reasonable leg and headroom. Rear legroom is a great one, headroom less so. Visibility. Its wide pillars and short windows impede outward visibility significantly. The backup camera helps, just like the parking sensors. The view out your front is quite good. Quality. Beautiful interior surroundings. Diamond pattern leather and rich looking materials abound. No rattles or squeaks inside our test car. Finished to your high standard. Utility. Cargo space is bound, although cabin has a good amount of nooks for smaller items. If utility is often a priority, look to the normal GLE class SUV, not the GLE Coupe. Small item storage. Interior storage is merely barely adequate, limited on the inside with the center console, a bizarre recess underneath the guts stack and door pockets. You expect a little more in the luxury SUV, cargo space. It has a smaller amount cargo holding capacity than its non coupe stable mate. The lift over height is pretty high. The cargo hold is a lot of tall. Yet it is deep. Technology. We're thrilled to see Apple CarPlay make its debut inside the GLE Coupe, however the lack of a touchscreen causes it to be all but unusable. The control and adjustability are beyond just what the command interface are designed for. The touchpad and dial are two separate systems, and actions and motions don't carry over. Audio and navigation. Our tester's Harman Kardon head unit sounds good and is also easy to utilize. Inputting destinations is simple, along with the system provides sufficient directions to improve success. The biggest challenge come in getting in the proper mode by jogging and spinning the dial controller. 
smartphone integration. Bluetooth pairing is quick, and both USB ports inside center console could be accessed from the head unit. The lower of both the USB ports is devoted to Apple CarPlay Android Auto integration, but accessing that mode is tremendously difficult. Driver aids The adaptive cruise control is effective, as well as the function is simple to access through cruise control stalk. Blind spot detection is definitely about perfect, and lane departure feedback is gentle. Lane centering is ok for extremely intermittent use. Voice control The voice recognition system doesn't recognize plain text inputs through the touchpad. The system features a specific order and technique of inputting commands. This can get tricky considering that the system is often a bit laggy, and that means you find yourself repeating and mistiming commands. Yeah.